Hey, Nick, looking good. What's up, Ross? How you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Things are rocking and rolling over here, man. Looking great, man. Really good. Stefan's uh, been rocking and rolling downstairs with HAC. Right. I'm here to check progress. All right, let's check it out. Let's start in the basement and we'll work our way up. All right, cool. So I know you want to check in on progress, but before, I'd like to introduce you to the audience. So, Ross, you're with T2 Engineering. That's right. Mechanical engineer. That's right. Yep. Uh, walk me through what you guys do. Yeah, so we are comfort and smart house experts. All right, so what we try to pride ourselves on is designing high performance HVC systems and electrical and plumbing systems yep. uh, that are gonna meet the client's expectations and uh, provide comfort, quiet, serviceable, you know, really fine-tuned systems. Right, and I know they're gonna ask, why do this on a residential home? So I want, let's walk through kind of our yeah. steps um, and where we, where we started. All right, I'll throw these on the... So client expectations, what, is, what does that mean? Yeah, so the first thing we've got to start, start off with is understand the client's expectations, right? What makes them comfortable? What are they looking for in the system? What are the goals and expectations at the end of the day? But you're talking everything. Uh, do they keep the windows open? Do they close the windows? Do they, do they cook? Do they not cook? How many people do they have over at Christmas? We like, have a lot of questions that we ask yeah. them. It's on, a, you know, it's on a sheet and we, you know, we just rattle them off. You and know? that's where we start. And we start there. And so once we understand that, we know what they want. And then we can start with the building envelope. Right? right. So once we get the expectations of the client, then the building envelope comes next. So here, envelope, we're talking? Wall, window, roof. And behind me here, you're, we're seeing traditional two by six stud wall uh, with rock wool in it. Right. But we actually have a little bit different than normal is we actually have an inch of spray foam. Inch of spray foam we did for air sealing. Mm -hmm. And then behind that, we actually have an inch and a half. And I have a piece here, but this is the Zip R. It's an, it's a, it's an R9. This is actually separated because it sat out in the rain a little bit. Um, but we have basically an inch and a half of foam and then our traditional zip sheathing. And this is polyiso. So this is a continuous insulation on the exterior wall. So our, our, our value on this wall is R31. Yeah, it's great. It's, I it's mean, great. goes R20, right? R21. But the, that exterior insulation, now we're adding, you know, we're, we're saving an additional 15, 20% on heat loss because we're not getting that thermal bridging. So when you tell me what wall you want and what windows you want and what attic insulation or roof insulation you're doing, then we can put it into a program called Manual J, right? So it's a load calculation software program and it's looking at all of the exterior envelope and all air infiltration. So we have all that information for walls, for windows, and for the roof, and we know how much air infiltration the house has. We know exactly how much heating and cooling every single room needs. But not only heating and cooling, but also ventilation. Yep, and we do a ventilation calc as well. Yep, so that's ASHRAE 62.2. So from there, you put together a set of drawings? Yeah, so exactly right. So let me take you there. We're trying to do all the heavy thinking so that when the subcontractors, in this case, East Coast Comfort, mm -hmm. gets on site, everything's thought through for them. Okay, right. so they can just execute. So here's our basement zone plan. So this is looking down at the basement. All right, we've got our uh, radiant zone down here, and we also have a dehumidification zone down here. So what's great about this is that because the load calc told us that we didn't have a huge cooling load, we didn't need to provide cooling down here. We only needed heat and dehumidification to dry it out. And if you guys pay attention, last episode we actually uh, were here with the guys from Vega, and we did the radiant install. A lot of a lot of good knowledge on how to do the install. The layout of the tubing. Right. Yep. The layout, how many zones, things like that. So we actually have the radiant here, but we also have it on the first floor. That's right. But it's only in the garage. So we added it to the garage, and this is super important is that we didn't do it just because we wanted a nice warm garage for our cars, but also for the living space above. The bonus room. The yeah, the bonus above. room. They, yeah. they sell these homes with a bonus room above the garage. They don't heat and cool it. You finish it, and then you, you struggle to maintain comfortability. Right. Um, right. Because they're trying to, you know, dump off a, an existing system. It's a common complaint in a retrofit house where they didn't insulate the, the garage space and they didn't heat the garage space. So all that cold radiation comes right up through the floor into the bonus room above and it's a common complaint that we have to solve. Right, and here that's actually our master suite and our master bathroom with that's tile. Right. right, so I mean we're talking about cold tile in the morning which we want to avoid. That's right. So that's zone four, zone one, talk to me about yep. zone so one. So that's our main heating and cooling zone, that's our main first floor zone. Thermostat placement over here, we'll talk about that upstairs. But uh, we're doing all the heating and cooling through an air handler. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a hydro air system, and uh, we'll be talking about that in the future. But, awesome. And then going upstairs to the second floor, we have one zone. Uh, it's, uh, we got a you know, fairly open concept um, with the area down below, but the uh, master bedroom is really the focal point. So that's where the thermostat's located up here. And we have electric radiant in the, uh, in the bathroom to be supplemental. 
So that's going to warm up the tile, keep it uh, quick responding, and uh, keep the clients very comfortable. Yeah, and we're still we're still providing heating heated and cooled air. This is more for like a comfortability, just kind of like the creature comfort. That's right. That's so right. That's right. From this well, is tile. Here. Yeah, the main reason we do it in bathrooms is because tile is super conductive, right. and so it gets cold really quickly. And, and you want to keep the mass. And we want to heat up that mass, heat up that tile, and, and increase what they call the mean radiant temperature of the space. So that's series one. Series two is this is where we start getting technical. This is probably what Stefan's looking at that's when right. he's on site. That that I think he's got a dirty set over there. Yeah, right? that's right. That's right. That's the zoning plan. Not that important. Still important, but not as important as this, right? So this is the actual layout of the equipment and the ductwork. So this is this is first floor, but this is you know from the basement. So if you look up, you can see the ductwork ran across the ceilings. We got our mechanical room across, you know, in that back corner. That's right. And that's what you've done here is you've you've laid everything out. So we laid everything out to scale, right? So we know exactly where the boiler's going, we know where the water heater's going, we know where the air handler down there's going, we know where the dehumidifier is going. You know, we know all of the ductwork's also been sized and that's called manual D, right? So we have got every bit of the ductwork sized appropriately. Um, the sizes. So we're not oversizing, we're, we're minimizing the size of the ductwork and, and only building what we need. Everything sized exactly for the room it's serving and for the air handler that's connected to. Why don't we go upstairs because I'd like to show where some of these registers land and you know and kind of how we've installed them. Sure, yeah let's do it. First floor is coming along great. All right so I am looking at the drawings here and what I'm noticing is all of these registers are in front of windows and doors. That's right. Yep. So that's called? So we're trying to window wash, window wash, right? That's the term that we use. And so the idea is that we want all of the heated air and the cooled air that we're supplying to the space. We want to hit the perimeter. And by hitting the perimeter, we're actually going to create that thermal barrier between inside and outside, mm -hmm. right? So if we can warm up the windows, the inner surface of the windows, we can in warm up the inner surface of the glass in the heating season and bring all that air back to a central return, that's going to do a really good job of trying to create that comfort that we're looking for. In this so place. a central return is interesting, and, we'll, and we can show in another drawing, but we're basically yeah. underneath our island. This is centrally located because we're, this is an open concept. Yeah, so we've designed the return for this space into the kitchen island which we're going to be building at our shop. So we have the option or the ability to build a big plenum underneath that island. And you've given us actually some dimensions to make sure how much clear area we need to allow that air to be um, returned back into the system below. That's right, yeah. So we're sized the return air grill to make sure that's going to provide the right amount of airflow back and it's going to be quiet, right? Because right. you don't want the whistling sound or things like that. And this is great because it's centrally located. So we're supplying air along that perimeter, and we're supplying air around this per perimeter, and we have some supplies on that perimeter. So literally, we've got three sides of air in the space and it all coming back to the central return here. So it's yeah. going to do a really good job in comfort. So we're supplying at the basically the coldest right now, being in the winter, that's yeah. the coldest point we're warming that air up so by the time it comes across you know we're making sure that you know centrally located is to the temperature your thermostat is now talk to me about thermostat because our yep. location is yep. here yep that's great and why why here you know because I know plenty of people aesthetically have told me to put it elsewhere yeah put it in a closet right. put it somewhere else right yeah. so uh, the, you're only as good as your weakest link okay. all right and thermostats are the brain for your whole HVC system so that first floor whatever the air handler is going to do is being t uh, is being told what to do from here so if this is in the wrong location you don't have a fighting chance of getting comfort right all right so, so we don't want it on exterior walls right because you're introducing effects from outside mm -hmm. you don't want it in the direct path of sunlight right because that's going to heat up the thermostat in the center it's warmer than tell it it's is. warmer than it actually is you don't want it near dimmer switches because dimmer switches in a wall Which give off heat i didn't realize that yep. so i we put dimmers everywhere yeah i know i know so uh, a lot of the newer dimmers are a lot better but if you ever felt the back side or the side mm -hmm. of a dimmer switch or even throw off or even hit it with a thermal gun if you hit the hit it with an infrared gun, you would see that the, the a rate around all the dimmer switches is just red, glowing red. And you know what? That will affect the temperature sensor that's sure. inside this thermostat. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a you don't all, you don't want to put a supply register near this because obviously the supplier is heated or cooled and will give it a false reading. So all of these things are are very important to get right because otherwise the system is going to be either overcooling or overheating, sure. and you'll never have comfort. So let's go upstairs because we're going to jump into the second floor. So this is actually a tip I took from, uh, here's Johnny over at B Vintage Builders, but this is actually Cobra Ridge Vent. 
and you know, right after this stuff's installed, we make sure the duct works nice and clean, and we actually nail down some Cobra Ridge vents. So yeah. you know these things, you know these things become dust dust pans. I know. All I trash know. goes in them. I know. But this right here is going to feed up, and we're essentially washing this window, right. and then in heating and cooling that. Space. Yeah, we're going to create a nice warm glass. The inner surface of that glass can be nice and warm, and then in the summertime, it's going to be nice, nice and cold, right? So you're going to you know you don't have those comfort issues when you normally are at a big window glass like this. So up we go. Right. Cool. All right, so this will be the future master bedroom. Right. And we have a dedicated air handler up above us. So this is air handler number two. That's right, that's right. So we're doing the whole second floor with one air handler, thermostat here in the master bedroom. And we've got supplies around the perimeter. So we're doing the same principle that we talked about downstairs with window washing, getting the supply air to the perimeter. But we're doing it from above. In this case, we're doing it from the ceiling, not from the floor. So you can see we've got one here, we've got another supply register there, which is gonna direct the airflow out at these sliding glass doors and make that sliding glass door warm up in the winter or cool off in the summer. And you'll notice that you have two here for the two panes of glass. We have two on those windows for the two panes. And as we work our way around this entire second floor, every single window has that wash. That's right. Uh, and that re is really gonna work to the efficiency of the system. That's right, that's right. And another advantage to it is that we've got a return in every single bedroom. Now, a lot okay. of times I've seen the return just in the hallway. Yeah, that's the, the common way to do it is big, one big central return in the hallway, and there's hope that you're gonna get all the airflow back. And you but undercut the doors. You undercut the doors, you try to do it, yeah. So um, you either gotta do a jump duct, a transfer duct, or something like that to kind of get around it. But what we like to do is put a dedicated return in every single bedroom, and what that allows you to do is if the door is closed or the door is open, you're not gonna create any pressure differences between one room and the next. Right. So your air handler can work and get airflow to all the rooms regardless of what's going on in terms of the doors being open and closed. And thermostat location up here was really based on the homeowner's request. That's right. You know, That's right. homeowner wanted, you know, the master bedroom to be the most comfortable room on the second floor. That's right. I mean, the, the, the home's going to be comfortable, but to have that extra, you know, you know, fine tuning, you know, where, you know, he's going to sleep. That's right. Yeah. So having the thermostat here and uh, with remote sensors nowadays, you can relocate them wherever you want in the space. But this is going to be a great focal point for the thermostat because it's out of the sunlight. It doesn't have all the things we talked about downstairs. Now we also have ventilation that we're dealing with. Yeah. So we, did, we weren't, we didn't have a system down on the first floor, but second floor it's key because this is where most of the time in the home is going to be spent. So, you know, we have an ERV in the attic, correct? That's right. Walk me through what the difference between an ERV and an HRV is. Yeah, it's one of the most common questions we get. Um, an ERV is an energy recovery ventilator. An HRV is a heat recovery ventilator. So an energy recovery ventilator is a heat recovery ventilator. It is the same thing. The only difference is that by, by being an energy recovery ventilator, it does heat and moisture. So I think of it as a passive humidifier, passive de dehumidifier to really moderate the humidity in the building. And the reason we need it is because we're building tight, we gotta ventilate right. right. If it was a leaky house that wasn't air sealed and didn't have all the things that you're doing from an efficiency standpoint, you wouldn't need it. But because you do, you're doing all these extra steps, we need to have it. So not only just for, you know, for indoor air quality, right, mm -hmm. to get fresh air in, but in this case, we're actually doing the bathroom exhaust with it. So we're actually pulling all the stale air out of the bathrooms and replacing that air that we pull out balanced so if we're i don't i'm not sure how many do you know how many cfm this one is 130 cfm so we're taking 130 cfm 100 percent of the time running all the time right. out of the bathroom stale air yep. and replacing the um, bedroom air with 100 cfm 130 cfm of fresh air that's right so it's so, balanced what you pull out is what you bring in so the billing pressure doesn't change right and that's super important especially from you know when we are building tight that we're not you know De, um, pressurizing, depressurizing yeah. the home. Yeah, the other thing too, people don't even think about is that your furniture, your bed, your mattress, your you know the wallpaper or the paint, all these things off gas. Right. And we breathe out CO2, right? So all of these VOCs and toxins that are in the building get trapped when you build things really, really tight. So that ERV is really there to ventilate the building, to get that you know, stale, You're constantly bringing contaminated fresh air. air outside and get fresh air back into the space. And that's super important. And like you said, you, you build tight, you have to ventilate right. It's a must. Yeah. It's an absolute must. Yep. So I think stay tuned for next episode. We're going to be on site with Stefan and we're going to walk through kind of, actually, let me dig into it. Your last sheet here is that's your right. your mechanical selections. Yep. So uh, you basically spec out all of the equipment. So on our next that's episode, right. we're going to walk this job with Stefan, talk about his execution, talk about some of these mechanical selections that we made on the project, right. why we chose them, the benefits of them, and just exactly how they're gonna work in keeping this home comfortable. That's right. Thanks for having me. Thank you.